Hi everybody, uh, thank you for stopping by to, you know, at my channel. Let us listen to their introduction. I'd like to talk about something I, I talked before, of, of, you know, a few months ago about this already. But I want to stress it out a little bit better. And I'm talking about three words over here. It's about revelation, inspiration, and illumination. So, and I'd like to go to, uh, I wrote it down on the board, sorry, I wrote it just over here, over here behind me, I wrote the board, and on the board, I'm talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19 till 16, and I think it's good to quickly, I will read real quickly through it, so you can understand at least the basic, and then I'll break things apart, because uh, certain questions, certain people ask certain questions, and sometimes it is a little hard to answer it because too many questions sometimes. Okay, so let's 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 read it first, and I start with uh, verse nine. It says over here in chapter uh, First Corinthians chapter two, um, but as is written, and a lot of people I read it before this are old and they explain it completely different, but. Let's go and see what um, the word has to say and the meaning of it, okay? I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Verse 10, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not, look what it says, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. I hope, you know, that uh, you also read those scriptures and I'll break it apart because a lot of people are confused with the word revelation and inspiration and uh, Illumination. So let's go for it. And you're talking about, let's go back in the history and in the, you know, and in the past what happened. Here's Paulus talking, okay? The classic passage of this subject, okay, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 16, was written to a special group that stands out in history as the most intellectual of all people, the Greeks. They were a race of creative thinkers. They really think deep things, you know, every little word, the meaning, so they can really grasp it. The sole instrument which they use is their attempt to pierce through the mysteries of existence was human reasons. This they sharpened to a keen edge, really, you know, they really want to know the integrity, they call it, okay? but it was uh, inadequate to solve the great mysteries of origins. 
of the wherefore of human existence of God and of evil. Plato, one of the great philosophers, said, We must lay hold of the best human opinion in order that borne by it as on a raft we may sail over the dangerous sea of life unless we can find a stronger boat or some sure word of God which will more surely and safely carry us. In a beautiful the philosopher says that he knew he knew there was something more deeper. This great philosopher acknowledged that mere human reason was not sufficient to answer the riddles with which man is confronted, and that the only sure foundation for a system of religious truth was not even the best of human opinion, but a revelation from God. Can you imagine an unbeliever, but he's a philosopher, you know, Plato, and here he even makes this assertion. I don't care what you think, what you do, what you, how you explain it, has to be from a higher power. That's all he's trying to say. And it means, of course, that he used use the word of your God. In a beautiful, he realized that. The man who wrote this passage declaring to these intellectuals that the Bible has come not from human reasons, but by divine revelation was himself trained in the schools. So the man who wrote this passage, okay, is talking about Paul. Now let's see what Paul, is, his background is, okay? He was a native of Tarsus, a city where Greek culture predominates, pre predominated. The University of Tarsus was known all over the world. Strepo placed it ahead of the universities of Athens and Alex Alexandria in a seal for learning. Paul's people were Roman citizens and also citizens of Tarsus, which latter fact tells us that his family was one of wealth and standing. For during the time of Paul, only people of wealth and standing in the community were allowed to possess Tarsian citizenship. Wow! This explains Paul's statement, I have suffered the loss of all things. You can read it in Philippians 3.8. I wrote, I wrote it down. He made a statement with all his knowledge. He says, look what he says. I have suffered the loss of all things. He even can comprehend it unless God revealed it to him. The city was noted for its intense activity, its atmosphere of what we today call drive. Paul was not reared in the uh, lassitude, yeah, lassitude and ease of an oriental city, but in an atmosphere of physical and mental achievement. That he had a truly training in the University of Tarsus is evidence from his words to the Corinthians, and I, ha and I, having come to you, brethren, came not having my message dominated by a transcendent uh, rhetorical display or by philosophical sub subtlety, and my message and my preaching were not caught in specious, uh, specious words of philosophy. You can read it in 1 Corinthians 2, 1-4. He could have used this had he wanted to. He was schooled in Greek uh, re re rhetoric, yeah, re re rhetoric, okay, philosophy, uh, in, in, you know, and also in the Greek literature. Uh, thus, in giving the Greeks his teaching of verbal inspiration, Paul was not looking at the subject only from one angle that of the mystic who knew what fellowship with God was and who had received communication from God, but he had had the 
the other side of the problem in the Greek university where he was brought into contact with human reason at its best. Here you can you understand what I'm saying, those philosophers coming together and oh, they have so many ideas and yet, as his, Plato says, there is something we humans cannot even touch. Look at this. He begins the treatment of the subject by telling the Greeks that neither scientific in, in investigating nor human reason, human reason has ever been able to discover a sure foundation upon which a religion system could be built. He says, Eyes had not seen nor ear heard the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. So that's, a, that's a condition. Okay? The context makes it clear that these things consist of the revelation of truth, the Holy Scriptures. But not only has scientific investigation never discovered this truth, but this truth has been produced by the activity of man's reason, for he said, neither have entered uh, the, the, the heart of man. The Greek word translated enter does not refer to something entering the mind from the outside, but was use of things that comes up in one's mind. We use the expression today, I ne it never entered my mind, meaning by that, that the things never occurred to us. Thus we have the statement of Paul that the truth of Scripture never across in the consciousness of man, never found its source in the reason of man. Observe the bearing this has upon teaching that find it basic in the theory of evolution, teaching to that effect that all that the human race knows is the result of divinity resides in man, and that therefore all knowledge has come from within the race, none from without. After asserting the fact of the final inadequacy of reason is solving the riddle of existence, Paul proceeds to describe the three successive steps in the transmission of truth from the heart of God to the heart of man. These are revelation, the act of God the Holy Spirit imparting to the Bible writers truth incapable of being discovered by man's unaided reason. You can read it in you know, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, 10 to 12. Inspiration, the act of God the Holy Spirit enabling the Bible writers to write down in God chosen words, infallible, the truth revealed, uh, 2.13, and illumination, the act of God the Holy Spirit enabling believers to understand the truth given by revelation and written down by inspiration, 14 to 16. Isn't it beautiful? Now I'm going to break it down, okay, the meaning of those words. But it's very important that we understand. People always say, well, the Bible is written by man in no way. But here, he's trying to explain to us, even Plato says, you know, you cannot understand the Word of God unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. And you don't understand what life is all about unless God reveals it to you. So the purpose of living and I think it's very important people to understand, God gives you life. But just not giving you life like this, no, He has a purpose. God wants a relationship. But it's up to us as an individual to receive it, to reject it, to search for it, when you hear it, to 
infant, you know, to investigate, all those things is up to the individual. But out of love, God is do, did this for one reason. Have fun, fellowship with you, a, a relationship. That's why I keep saying many, many times, God hates all religions. Because religions are made man-made. And he give us the word, and he, even Paul, going to one of the greatest universities, he realized it. I have suffered the loss of all things. All his knowledge is impossible to comprehend life, the purpose, existence, heaven and hell. It's impossible. You can think about it, you can talk about it, but if you don't have any guideline and proof, then what, what are you li living for? Yeah, it's a time from coming and going, we all know that, generally speaking, yes. Okay, so, so it's beautiful, okay, so he's talking about all those three things. Now, he says over here, we will deal first with revelation, and that is so important, folks, because, like I said, this I will explain to you why the Bible is the Word of God and not man. I share with you already, they even Plato said it's impossible to know. And here Paul is trying to explain with all his education. He's so far beyond uh, knowledge. The professors here have right now is no com nothing comparing with him, knowledge-wise, okay? That's the, that's the beautiful. Look what he says. We will deep First word, Revelation. The first word in our English translation in verse 9, authorized version, is but. And is the translation of the strong adversative particle in the Greek. But the first word in verse 10 should not be but, but for. Since the Greek word here is not Adversative, but explained nudity. They told you the word explain the word better, okay? Uh, Paul explained that the Bible did not come by the way of scientific invest investigating and human reason, but that it came in another way by revelation. Then he shows that the very fact that God gave this truth by revelation proves that in the nature of things it could not have been given in any other way and proceeds in verse 11 to show that this is true. The word revelation is the translation of a Greek word which means to uncover, to lay open what has been veiled or covered up. The word us refers to the Bible writers. Very important, folks. This is something to say. God appointed certain people what to write. Okay? For Paul is explaining to the Greek his knowledge of the truth. The Holy Spirit who searched the deep things of God uncovered this truth to the vision of these men. Okay, I hope you follow me so far. Then Paul, by the use of pure logic, proved that these Greeks, the impossibility of discovering God's words through scientific investigation or human reason. The word man in the Greek is not the word which refers to an individual male of the human race, but in a genetic term of man which include individuals of both sexes, okay? The second use of the word man is accompanied by the definite article which the Greek points out individually. Thus our translation is, for who is there of man who knows the things of the individual man, that is, no individual knows the inner thoughts and heart life of another person. Man is inscrutable to his fellow man. 
I hope you understand the word. I cannot understand or know from another person because that person really have to explain to me all his depth, his feeling. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's talking about. The inside of the man, the heart life of an man. Man is inscrutable to his fellow man. The word spirit in the Greek refers here to the rational spirit, the power by which a human being feels, thinks, wills, and decides. Again, the word man in the phrase uh, save the spirit of man is preceded by the article. The Greek article originally came from the demonstrative pronoun and it retains much of the demonstrative uh, force of pointing out. Therefore we translate, for who is there of man who knows the things of the individual man except the spirit of that man which is in him. Only the individual knows what is in his heart of hearts. To his fellow man, he is inscrutable. It's like a mystery. Isn't it beautiful? How they come out with those explanations. It's so beautiful. So, just so, Paul says, Logic will lead us to the conclusion that if a man is inscrutable to his fellow man, so God must be inscrutable to man. And just as only the individual person knows what is in his own heart, so only God knows what is in his own heart. Therefore, if man finds it impossible through scientific investigation, investigation and human reason to discover the inner secret of his fellow man, it is clear that he cannot find out the mind of God by the same method. The only way in which a person can come to know the inner heart life of an other person is to have that person uncover the secrets of his inner life in him. It likewise follows that the only way in which a person can know the mind of God is to have God uncover his thoughts to man. Thus Paul has demonstrated to these Greeks the absolute need of a revelation from God if we are a if we are to know what is in his heart. The first step, therefore, is the transmission of truth from the heart of God to the heart of the believer in revelation. The set of God, or the act of God, the Holy Spirit, uncovering the things in the heart of God to the Bible writers, thus imparting the truth of Scripture to them. See what I'm saying? It's not matter. Okay, they God use people, yes. Because we speak, we are humans. Okay? May I read it again, okay? Um, what I say? The first step, therefore, is the transmission of truth from the heart of God to the heart of the believer in Revelation. The act of God, the Holy Spirit, in uncovering the things in the heart of in the heart of God to the Bible writers, thus imparting the truth of scriptures to them. So here again the word of God stay right like this. It's not man's word. So I think of here we have to remember how beautiful it is, okay, that God out of love is doing this to us because he loves us. He, you know, Christ died for our sins, for all our sins. So here, I like to stop this. I hope you want to try to meditate on it. I will continue, of course, and it's a little more, but I hope it, it, it will grab you. The Bible is written by man, but what? 
how the Holy Spirit inspired him to do, what to do. And I may I say myself, I, I, you know, people always oh, use, oh, this people says, they claim I have a revelation of God, revelation here. You know, biblical revelation is written history. Did you know that? That's what the Bible really says. So, what I'm trying to say is this, God gave us the Word of God, the Bible, and He tells us, written history is that, it's the Bible, okay? From Adam all the way to the end, God tells us what will happen. That is His plan. That is a written history. And God showed to us what will happen. Regardless of what people think and what people want, He gives us His Word and it will come to pass. That's all I'm trying to say. The written history, that's the Word of God. So, if you want to know your future, read the Word of God. Don't listen to me. I cannot tell you. I can share with you what I, what I know, what I've read, but you as an individual can read it. And who will tell you and show you the truth? The Holy Spirit. I'm not going to tell you that. I can, I can share with you. I experienced that. Don't get me wrong. Because I want to know what is my destiny? What is my future? According to God's Word. He created us. He gave us rules to live. He also tells us what is right and wrong. Not up to us to say, I'd like to know, or I can tell God, forget you, do, I do my own thing. That's up to you and up to me. Well, I made the choice already. In 1970, I gave my heart to the Lord. I repent, I, I accept the Lord. Yes. So it's up to you folks what you will do. And when you read the Word of God, like the Bible says, like Christ says in Matthew 4, 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded of the mouth of God. I'll stop right now. I hope it helps you. And I will say if you, you know, if you uh, get anything of my uh, videos, uh, give me the thumb up. And of course, also, please give me, uh, you know, if you want to su su subscribe, please do ring the notification bell. And I will say then, until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye now.